Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to check the Eferskai XSR SIM USB dongle. This device is going to enable you to wirelessly control your flight simulator without having the need to physically connect your radio transmitter to your computer. Inside the dongle, we can find an XSR receiver without an antenna, since you're not going to get too far from the receiver. In addition, on the top, we can find over here an S port that will allow you to upgrade the firmware of the receiver in the future, although I don't think that it's going to be very necessary. Binding the XSR SIM dongle is done by pressing the triangle over here while connecting it to your computer, both Mac and PC, it doesn't matter. This solid LED indicator is going to indicate that now the receiver is on binding mode. Since the XSR receiver is using the D16 model, you will need to bind the receiver just like any other D16 receiver. So head over to the model menu, set the mode to D16, channel range 1 to 16 or 1 to 8 if you want to decrease the latency. Then press bind, and as you can see now this LED is flashing, which means the binding procedure was successful. Then exit the bind mode on the transmitter, disconnect the USB dongle, connect it. Now you can see we're getting this solid green LED indicator, which indicates that the receiver is bound. On my Mac computer, I didn't have to install any drivers in order to use the dongle, so it simply worked out of the box. Setting it up on a PC is very simple as well, after plugging the device, it's going to install the drivers, and since it has been already installed in this computer, we can find other devices, the Eferskai simulator. The next thing we need to do is to configure the XSR SIM on your favorite flight simulator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up on liftoff, Velocidrone, and also on Freerider on your phone. You can see, by the way, when I'm unplugging the dongle, it shows that Eferskai simulator has been disconnected. And after plugging it in, you can see that now the Eferskai simulator was detected. In order to configure the XSR SIM in liftoff, go to Options, then select Controls and Controller. You can see over here it shows Eferskai simulator. If I'm going to disconnect the dongle, it's not going to show anything, so this is going to be a good indication that everything is working properly. Then select Calibrate, start calibration. You will have to move all the sticks around like that. You can also see the indication of the movement on the screen. Then center all the sticks, wait for a couple of seconds. Now it's going to ask you to assign the throttle stick. So just move the throttle stick, then leave all the sticks centered, assign the pitch, then the roll, and finally the O. Then you will have to head over to fine tune. You can see over here, for example, that the O has been assigned not in the correct manner. So when I'm tilting it to the right, it actually shows that it's been tilted to the left. So we'll have to press over here, invert, and now everything is working properly. Then hit save, and it can go back to the main menu. Now, unfortunately, liftoff flight simulator is a little bit too demanding to my computer, so I'm not going to show you how it works because recording the screen and also flying at the same time is not going to work properly. But on my PC, actually, it worked better than on my Mac, and my Mac has better specs, so I don't think that it is really optimized for Macs. But if you have a latest Mac model, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Configuring the controller under Velocity Drone is also very simple. Head over to controller press assign controller and move any stick on your controller. And you can see that now it shows over here, Efro Sky Simulator. Then you will have to assign throttle, roll, pitch, and yo. And of course you can select also other settings. So for example, you can set one of the auxiliary channels to change your camera and etc. So if you want to assign throttle, press throttle, and then move the stick that you want to assign the throttle to. So for example, if you want to replace this value, hit replace. First, you will have to center all the sticks and then move throttle. And you can see that now it has been assigned. Then you can repeat the same step for roll, pitch, and yo. Calibrating the controller is done by pressing calibrate. Then over here, you can calibrate each axis and it can also increase or decrease the sensitivity. Now, as you can see, I can control the flight simulator just by using my remote controller wirelessly, which is pretty nice. It is also possible to use the XSR SIM dongle on mobile devices and then you can use them on the go for controlling flight simulators. In order to do so, you have to make sure that your device supports OTD devices. I'm going to show you how it works on my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. In order to do so, I'm going to use a USB-C to USB adapter. And now, as you can see, after plugging the XSR SIM dongle, it has been successfully connected to my transmitter. Now I'm going to show you how to set it up on Freerider simulator. So what you need to do is to press Calibrate Controller, 
Then center all the sticks on your remote controller. Press OK. Then just follow the instructions on the screen. And now the calibration has been successfully completed. And as you can see, when I'm moving the sticks around on the transmitter, you can see the indication on the screen. Now I'm going to start the desert track and I can simply use the remote controller you know, to fly it around and actually the graphic is pretty nice. Now by the way, this is the paid version of the Freerider app, so it enables you to split the screen. So we can just go over here to the setup section, under custom settings we can enable side by side view, now it is on, we can press save and exit, and now as you can see the screen is split into two. Then you can simply place your phone inside via goggles and fly it FPV style. However, if you suffer from motion sickness, it is not really recommended because I got a big headache after a couple of minutes using it. So overall, using the XSR SIM dongle is extremely simple, and in case it wasn't clear, you don't have to use the Taranis x Lite. It's compatible with any FR Sky compatible TXs such as the T12 and many others. In terms of pricing, the XSR SIM dongle goes for $28, so this is definitely not a very cheap solution to control your flight simulator wirelessly, however, this is probably the most elegant solution. Of course, you have an option to connect your radio transmitter to your computer using a cable, and you can also use Betaflight 3.5 feature, and then you will also be able to control your flight simulator wirelessly, however, it is not going to be as easy as using this solution. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this dongle, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.